Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of pluritin. This work was published in JAX by John Hoskin and Eric Sorensen in their paper, A Concise Synthesis of Pluritin, Enabled by Non-Traditional CH Epimerization. Pluritin was first isolated in 1947 by Robbins et al. in the culture fluid of the basidiomycete fungus Pleurotus griseus. It shows activity against gram-positive bacteria and has also shown some interesting anti-cancer activity. This anti-cancer activity is due to irreversible inhibition of the thyroidoxin thyroidoctase system, but more detailed research into its mode of action has been hampered due to a lack of material. This has spurred a lot of interest in the organic chemistry community into the development of synthetic roots that would allow for the large-scale production of this interesting molecule. The structure is quite interesting, as it contains a fused benzoquinone ring, eight contiguous stereocenters, and a challenging transhindrandane framework that makes up the core of the constrained polycyclic system. In order to install the benzoquinone system, the researchers envisaged using a photoenolization diels alder reaction, while a photoredox epimerization could be used to construct the transhindrandane system. To construct the ether and lactone rings, they imagined that two different benzylic oxidation reactions could be used. So let's start with the synthesis. This started with a Reformatsky reaction between N-butyl bromopropionoate and methoxyindenone. In this reaction, zinc first undergoes an oxidative insertion into the carbon bromine bond that can then tautomerize to form a zinc enolate. This enolate undergoes an aldol type addition into the carbonyl oxygen via a six-member transition state forming the new carbon-carbon bond. This was then reacted directly with hydrochloric acid, which protonated the hydroxyl group and promoted an elimination reaction to form an alkene. This alkene was then hydrogenated using palladium hydroxide and ammonium formate, which generated hydrogen gas in situ upon the elimination of carbon dioxide. This produced the target intermediate in a 95% yield over two steps with a 6 to 1 DR. Taking this forward, the ester was reduced using lithium aluminium hydride, which first adds a hydride to the ester, forming a lithium alkoxide, which then eliminates butoxide, forming an aldehyde. Further reduction with another equivalent of lithal produced a lithium alkoxide species, which was then subject to a coid birch reduction. This is an improvement on the traditional birch reduction, as it does not use ammonia gas, and instead uses ethylene diamine. Under these conditions, Free electrons are generated in solution, and these can add to the aromatic ring. As this ring has an electron donating methoxy group, the electron will first add at the ortho position to generate a negative charge at the meta position, which is then protonated by terbutanol. The protonation happens at the meta position, as it is the furthest away from the electron donating methoxy group. The compound, now with a radical at the ortho position, is once again reduced and then protonated by terbutanol forming a diene species. This was then reacted with hydrochloric acid, which protonated the ether, allowing the chloride to act as a nucleophile and promote a demethylation. The resulting enol then tautomerizes to the more stable keto species, and the alkene then migrates to form the enol, overall producing the target compound in a 40% yield. Taking this forward, it then took part in a Mitsunobu reaction. Diethyl azodicarboxylate, more commonly known as DEAD, is first attacked by triphenylphosphine, generating a negatively charged species that can deprotonate the N-hydroxysalamide. The hydroxyl group then attacks the phosphonium cation, and this promotes the elimination of the dead byproduct and the generation of a highly activated oxygen species. The oxythalamide can then attack this activated electrophile, forming the new oxygen carbon bond upon the elimination of triphenylphosphine oxide. With this complete, they then carried out the key photoenolization diels alder cycloaddition reaction. Dimethoxymethylbenzaldehyde was first irradiated to produce a triplet biradical. This promotes an intramolecular hydrogen radical abstraction that then goes on to form a dienol. It is proposed that this UV irradiation first generates a singlet excited state, where the electrons in the pi and pi star orbitals have opposite spins. This can then undergo intersystem crossing where the spin of the highest energy electron is inverted, producing an excited state, where both the pi and pi star electrons 
have spins orientated in the same direction. While this forms both the E and Z dienol, the E dienol has a much shorter lifetime, so the products primarily arise from reaction with the Z isomer. This Z isomer can react with titanium isopropoxide, which is known to form bridged aggregates in solution, and this can coordinate to both the enol and one of the methoxy groups. This stabilizes the Z dienol and allows for a Diels Alder reaction to occur, forming the endo product in a 57% yield with a greater than 20 to 1 DR. In the next step, another photochemical reaction was carried out. An iridium-3 catalyst is first irradiated with UV light, forming an excited state that can react with a Hanch ester which reduces iridium to iridium-2, together with the formation of a cationic amine radical. This iridium-2 complex reacts with the substrate and reduces the hydroxythalamide, reforming the iridium-3 catalyst. This iridium-2 species reduces the thalamide, reforming the iridium-3 species, while the thalamide radical undergoes a proton transfer with a cationic Hanch ester to produce hydroxythalamide and generate an oxygen-centered radical on the substrate. A 1,5-hydrogen atom transfer then occurs, forming a tertiary radical that is then protonated from the bottom phase by triisopropoxy benzene thiol. This bulky thiol was required to influence the diastereoselectivity, as the preferred epimer was produced in a 1.1 to 1 dr and a 74% yield. A range of different thiols were screened for this reaction, and this produced the best combination of yield and diastereoselectivity. With the transhindrin Dane framework now complete, the authors attempted to form the lactone ring with the benzylic hydroxyl group, however these attempts were unsuccessful. Instead, they modified their strategy and performed a deoxygenation reaction which would allow them to reinstall this group later in the synthesis. This was carried out using boron trifluoride, which coordinates the hydroxyl group, promoting it to leave and form a carbocation that is stabilised by conjugation with the electron-rich aromatic ring. It is the stability of this carbocation that provided selectivity for the reaction at this group in preference to the more sterically accessible primary hydroxyl group. This cation then reacted with triethyl silane, generating the product in a 96% yield. Taking this forward, an oxidative cyclization was then carried out. The compound was reacted with DDQ, which oxidizes the benzylic position, first abstracting a hydrogen radical and then oxidizing it further, forming a benzylic carbocation. This underwent intramolecular attack by the hydroxyl group to form the pentacyclic product. The researchers could crystallize this compound and unambiguously confirm its structure using X ray crystallography. With this advanced intermediate synthesized, the end game of the synthesis could be carried out using the strategy developed by the Hart group. Their synthesis uses a Van Leucen reaction to form a nitrile. This reaction uses a toluene sulfonyl metal isocyanide, more commonly known as TOSMIC. This is first deprotonated by potassium terpbutoxide, and this then attacks the carbonyl, generating an alkoxide that attacks the isocyanide, forming a five membered ring bearing a negative charge. This can then tautomerize, placing the anion at the more stabilized position adjacent to the tosyl group. A ring opening reaction can then occur, producing a nitrogen anion that then eliminates the tosyl group. The resulting N formulated alkene imine is then attacked by the butoxide, forming a tetrahedral intermediate that then eliminates terbutyl formate and produces the desired nitrile. In the next step, this nitrile was reduced using dibal. This adds a hydride to the nitrile, forming an imine that is coordinated to the aluminium cation. This intermediate does not undergo further reduction and instead can be hydrolyzed to produce the aldehyde upon workup with hydrochloric acid. To set the stage for the lactone formation, this aldehyde was oxidized using silver oxide and sodium hydroxide. This is similar to Tollens reagent, which is used in the silver mirror test to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. In this reaction, the aldehyde coordinates to the silver, making it more electrophilic, and is attacked by the hydroxide. Abstraction of a hydrogen radical and further oxidation to generate a carbocation allows for the elimination of the reduced silver species and the formation of the desired carboxylic acid in a 62% yield. In the next step, another oxidation was carried out, this time using cerium ammonium nitrate. This reacted with the aromatic ring, promoting an oxidative demethylation resulting in the formation of the target benzoquinone. Further oxidation of this compound using manganese dioxide generated a benzylic cation, similar to that we saw earlier, which was formed by DDQ. 
in this case, it underwent an intramolecular attack by the carboxylic acid, forming the target plurotin in a 32% yield. Well, I hope you enjoyed the synthesis. Join me in the next video, where we will look at the total synthesis of pleuromutilin.